Chances are, if you've been searching for post-processing tutorials for landscape photography, you've probably come across the term luminosity mask. Luminosity masks have traditionally been the domain of Adobe Photoshop. And I hate to tell you, but if you own Photoshop and if you go searching for luminosity mask, you're not going to find it because luminosity masks are not a tool. They're not a filter. They're not an action, but rather they are a technique utilizing layers, channels, and masks so that photographers can select specific regions of a photo based on their relative luminosity value. This is probably best explained by bringing back the classic zone system from Ansel Adams. This was a way of quantifying on a numerical scale, the range of luminosity values within a photograph from the you know, darkest regions to the brightest. And once you're able to mask and select those regions, you can perform whatever edits you want to them. Now, if you've been operating under the assumption that luminosity masks are only something that can be used in Photoshop, that you would have to edit a photo using Photoshop as opposed to Lightroom in order to take advantage of the power of luminosity masks, well, there's actually a technique. There is a method that you can use in Adobe Lightroom for editing your photo using the general principles of luminosity masks. It's not quite the same as a luminosity mask in Photoshop because there are obviously no layers or masks or channels within Lightroom, but there are tools and techniques that you can use that are very similar and will give you very similar results. And that is what I'm going to demonstrate for you today. To demonstrate this technique of luminosity masks and Lightroom, the photograph that we're going to be editing today is one that I captured last year in the mountainous region of Northern Italy known as the Dolomites. This particular area was a place uh, known as Tre Cime di Labredo absolutely phenomenal place to go and to hike and to do landscape photography. Just one of those kind of bucket list uh, travel and landscape photography destinations. Absolutely beautiful. The thing that I would like to do with this photograph creatively is there's, there's really two things. And by the way, nothing has been edited in this photo. This is straight out of camera. I haven't done anything because I wanted it to be just as raw and as natural as possible. The two things I want to do here, you know, first there's the sky and the sky is obviously, you know, pretty bright. There was a lot of dynamic range going on in this photo and the sky is a bit overly bright and the foreground and midground is a little overly dark. It's um, just a lot of contrast in this image. I want to retain that kind of silhouette look uh, for the photo, but what I would like to do is make some edits to the sky just to give it a little more color, a little more contrast and bring down that intensity. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the sky by using a luminosity mask style technique, which utilizes the graduated filter. This is obviously the uh, rectangular icon up here at the top of the develop panel. You've probably used this before for dodging and burning and you know adding a little bit of vignette to a photo. You know, as you can see, when you just drag it in like this and you know pull it down, you know, you're darkening the sky. If I turn on the mask here, the red areas show where the effect is being applied, and then the effect is automatically feathered, uh, you know, just like a graduated filter on a camera would, into the photo itself. Now, the thing that'll jump out at you immediately when you look at this is the fact that, you know, yes, I have, you know, made some edits to the sky, and it definitely looks a lot moodier and more dramatic now. But the problem is, is that those same edits have been applied to these peaks here in the uh, midground, and that is totally not what I want. It's already dark enough. I don't need these changes to be applied to the peak. So what we can do here is we're going to use Lightroom's version of a luminosity mask. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want these changes to not be feathered into the photo. I want these changes to be applied 100% to the photo, all the way across every pixel in the photo, very similar to a luminosity mask. So to do that, you just create a graduated filter and you collapse it down, you know, rather tight like this. Then you grab the little handle and you drag it all the way down off the edge of the photo on the bottom. And when you do that, you'll see then that the whole photo now 
is 100% red, like there's no feathering going on at all, which is exactly what we want. If I turn off the mask and just demonstrate this for you, if I adjust the exposure slider, it basically functions like the exposure slider in the global develop settings. Now, here is where the technique comes in, which is uh, Lightroom's version of luminosity masks. So to edit this sky up here, what I would like to do is, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing this. I'm gonna bring down the exposure a little bit. Uh, obviously some highlights too. I don't wanna to get too crazy with this. I'm uh, gonna add a little bit of uh, warmth from a color temperature perspective, just to give it a little more orange and yellow. I'm uh, going to increase the haze some, maybe give it a little bit of clarity just to bring out some contrast and some, some drama. Well, I could do this all day, but the point is, is that I've applied some edits to the sky here, which are, you know, very different from how the image looked before. And these edits are being applied across the entire photo. But let's focus these edits only to the sky. So to do that, you come down here to the bottom of the develop panel, uh, or the, the local adjustment settings, and you'll see this option for range mask. It's off by default, but just toggle this to luminance. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click show luminance mask so that you can see what's going on here. What this does is you'll see in this area, there's a, there's a slider for range. Range is essentially the full, it's like I was talking about before with the zone system, it's the full, uh, luminosity range of the photo with the darkest pixels all the way at the far left and the brightest pixels all the way at the far right. And there's two handles on this slider, one at the far left and one at the far right. Now, to isolate the sky, what you do is you want to remove the areas of the photo that you don't want these changes applied to. And in this particular photo, that would be the darker areas of the photo. So I then just grab this handle at the far left and slide it to the right. And in doing so, it is excluding everything in the histogram below the setting on this slider. And so as you can see, when I get up right around here or so, the darker shadowy areas of the image are, uh, they've, they've turned gray because they're no longer part of this mask. The mask uh, is only affecting the sky up here. Now, if I wanted to, I could focus and kind of intensify this selection a little bit by pulling smoothness down, which just makes it uh, a little less feathery, I guess is the way to describe it. Or you could increase it and then that kind of blurs it across the image. But then you can see that these gray areas are starting to get red, so that's not really what I want. So. I usually leave this at 50. 50 is is uh, perfectly fine. So, all right, so that looks you know decent enough, I think. So then once you've dialed it in, you turn off the mask and the changes have only been applied to the sky, to that specific range of luminosity values in the photo. And if I toggle this graduated filter on and off, you can, uh, see for yourself the change that's happening. Nothing else in the photo is being affected. I've left the shadows alone and I've left the uh, the darkest pixels in the image alone and the sky uh, definitely looks better. All right, so let's say that we want to do this again and we want to do it with the darker areas of the image. Well, to do that, you just go back to the graduated filter, right click on the little handle for the one that you created before, I'm going to do duplicate so that it's covering the entire image. I'm going to reset the settings for this so that we're starting over. Drag this all the way down. Uh, and like I said before, so I want to bring up some of these shadows and bring out a little bit of detail that is in some of these shadowy areas. I don't want to go too hard with this. I just kind of want to you know, introduce a little bit of contrast, maybe some texture tool. This is a uh, two. This is a, a new um, tool in some of the more recent versions of Lightroom. Um, so we're bringing up the texture, a little bit of dehaze. There's a little bit of color cast going on too. So I'm just going to uh, add a little bit of green and then also bring the color temperature down towards blue so that we're 
pushing this into the shadows. Now, I think that's good enough for, uh, for demonstration purposes. So very similar to what we did before with the sky, we're now doing the reverse with the shadows. So I'm going to turn on the luminance mask, grab the handle at the right this time, and then drag this to the left. And as you can see, now we are selecting the peaks and the foreground. And you don't have to bring it down too much. You know, the sky is, you know, the, those bright areas of the sky are now being excluded. Uh, turn the mask selection off, and then I can toggle this on and off. And as you can see, I brought out definitely more shadows and more detail in this foreground than uh, what was there before. It is starting to get a little HDR from my taste, but I think for the purposes of this video, it's, it's perfectly fine. Now, what I would like to uh, show you is a way that you can actually fine tune this a little bit. You'll notice that those changes that I just made with bringing up the exposure uh, also affected the sky up here because if we were to convert or just view this as black and white, the just like the zone system from earlier, the luminance values of these clouds up here are very similar to the foreground and midground down here. So they're being included because Lightroom just sees them as being the same. So let's go back to color. I'm gonna go back to the graduated filter, select this, turn on lumina luminance mask is on. Now what you can do is if you want to exclude these clouds from this mask and, and thus not make them quite as bright as they're being made, you can click on brush up here. With that, then I can brush over the clouds and I can choose you know how much feathering I want in here and you know how uh, large the brush brush size should be and all that kind of stuff now I could get in here and kind of you know get into all these little crevices in here with the brush tool if I wanted to but I mean you get the idea so at this point what I've been able to do is uh, adjust the exposure of the foreground in the midground so that we're bringing up more detail, some more texture in these areas without affecting the clouds so that both of them are uh, functioning independently. So we've brought down the sky and we've brought up the foreground and midground just using these two graduated filter masks. Oh, and by the way, one more thing. This technique also works with the radial uh, filter tool as well. Very similar technique to the graduated filter tool. You just create your circle and let's say that I want to bring a little more attention to these three peaks in the middle. I could create the filter, bring up the exposure with a slider. Oh, first I need to invert it. Bring up the exposure slider a little bit and then to keep it from looking a little too glowy and from affecting the sky back here in the background, which is already plenty bright. Again, come down here to luminance and I'm gonna turn on the mask so I can see what I'm doing and then drop this down from the far right side. And in doing this, I'm only affecting the peak, uh, those three peaks and the foreground in front of them. Very clean separation there. I think that, that worked out really well. I'm gonna turn off the mask, uh, bump the exposure a little bit more, and maybe even add, uh, you know, like a little bit of sharpness, maybe some clarity and some texture because it is the, the subject of the photo. And if I turn it on and off, you can see that I'm now, you know, pushing out the center of the photo a little bit and giving it some more attention. So yeah, I mean, there, obviously there's plenty more I could be doing to this photo and the edits that I made uh, for this video are just really for demonstration purposes, just so you get an idea of how it works. But I hope you see uh, the potential here of what you can do with the graduated filter and with the radial filter, because you can create as many of these filters as you want and then use that luminance range slider at the bottom of the uh, settings for each one of those filters to be applying very targeted adjust adjustments to specific uh, luminance values within your photo. Very, very similar 
to how lumin luminosity masks in Photoshop work. Except here in Lightroom, all the edits are being made on a non-destructive raw photo, which is awesome because then you're not having to edit multiple files. And the fact that you're using sliders and it's just so much more straightforward and easy to use compared to the learning curve of Photoshop. All right, so awesome. I hope you learned something in this video today. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, any thoughts, anything that you would like to share, by all means, please put it in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you felt like you learned something from it, uh, I would appreciate a thumbs up on the video and also subscribe if you're interested in uh, seeing more videos from this channel. I make you know, videos about uh, landscape photography, obviously, both travel vlog videos, uh, I do the occasional bit of uh, gear review too, and I'm doing videos like these where I'm demonstrating some techniques, some post-processing techniques using both Lightroom and Photoshop. So if you're interested, uh, please hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified of new videos when they come out. All right, that's it. Hope you learned something new about Lightroom today. I'll see you next time. <music>